I spent an entire year and nine months of my life completely celibate. I wasn't dating. I wasn't having a good experience with men and instead of investing all of that time and energy trying to get a man to understand me, I felt it was best that I take the time to understand and enjoy myself. If you are in a season in your life where you are single and you're in this season of waiting, I want you to stop that. You can invest your time a lot better than using this season of being single, longing for this partnership. You're able to use this precious time to invest it into yourself so that you are solid for the next chapter. I want you to use the season of your life and see it as something sacred, not something that you wish would pass by. So let's get started. In this video, I will share with you how I decentered men from my life and all of the amazing things that it has done for me in hopes that the same will happen for you or that you see a different side of this part or this chapter in your life. I decided that I wanted to manifest more into my life. And in order for me to do that, I really had to get serious about the amount of energy that I was putting into my romantic relationships and wanting to get a man to understand me, to feel me, to love me in the way that I wanted to be loved. I realized that if I just did the work and invested all of that love and energy on loving myself, the next person that came into my life either would get so scared away that they wouldn't even bother because I require too much, or would meet me exactly as I am and say, wow, where have you been? I've been waiting my entire life for someone just like you. And that only happens when you actually know yourself. It gets easier for your partnerships, your divine partnerships, not just people that come and go. It gets easier for your divine partnerships to form when you are sure about who you are. Or, sure enough, to make decisions and set boundaries that kind of shift your direction and, and where you're going so you're actually in the right place at the right time to meet this divine partner. To be honest, my spiritual awakening changed me internally and hormonally almost. Because I was doing so much of the work to strip away my ego, I realized that a lot of the sexual desires that came over me or that come through from a lot of people are so ego-driven that when you start to strip away the layers of where these desires and these urges actually come from and you heal them or you just get to the root enough, you start to realize how much you just really don't need all of these external things. I feel like maybe when you are in a season of your life where you maybe have a little bit more maturing to do, it's easy for you to give into your vices. It's easy for you to give into the distractions of sex and just explicit things that you feel are doing something for you at the time, but at the end you're like, why did I do that? You know, basically the deeper that I dived within my childhood wounds and my insecurities and all of these ideologies that I needed to change within my heart and mind to grow, it actually started to work. All of the external things, all of the um, low vibrational urges that I had, I was so content with who I was and I was so happy with just existing in who I am, I didn't need any external validation from a man or I didn't crave things physically. Once I got a taste of what divine love is, as I was healing and growing through so many challenging things in my life, I realized that the love that I actually want to have and keep was something so far beyond the physical that now I didn't crave this physical form of love anymore. I wanted something deeper. I knew that it existed because it's something that the divine was able to give me in my time of need. It was so pure, so awesome that now when I looked in relationships, I wanted something that was close to or would give me an opportunity to experience that. 
because I was becoming more intentional about the way that I was spending my time and the way that I was choosing my relationships and the way that I wanted to love and it was outside of the physical form, I knew that journey was something a little bit more sacred and it was between me and what I feel is my higher source. So allowing a man to be a witness to something that I feel was so sacred would be um, just a dishonor to my higher source. I didn't want to be in positions in my life where I was going to be coerced into someone else's sexual urges, someone else's physical, egoic fantasies. I didn't want to put myself in a position where I would regret wasting my time and energy on one, explaining myself to someone who is not necessarily on that path, two, putting them in positions where they feel like they aren't worthy or they aren't loved, we're just not on the same page, and three, I just really didn't care to do certain things and I wasn't going to dilute what was so sacred to me just to have someone in my life you know facing all of these challenges this inner work was happening inside of me and I felt that spiritually I was coming or I was in matrimony with the divine so that in the physical he would be able to present my partner to me and I would know it would come from him because of the amount of work that I'm doing spiritually now I know that sounds bizarre right and outside looking in it could seem very intense like this very intense spiritual journey that this person is going on at like random it happened to me at random once I dedicated my life to healing literally once I decided that the things that hurt me I didn't want them to hurt anymore it took me on a path that changed me and I knew it was something that I should do because I was never a part of some huge religious cult-like group that was forcing me to submit to this higher power literally the voice within my head was taking me on a spiritual path that I had a will and I fully wanted to do and that was my journey that's kind of where it took me and I was the happiest I have ever been in my life in the trust that no matter what I was sticking to a plan and if you are someone that this is you're also on the same path and God has called you to keep yourself sacred for however long you feel honor that you're not crazy for having these experiences and I feel more women do society has just put us in this weird space where we're super divine creatures we bring life into the world but we're not supposed to be truthful about the things that happen to us so this is a safe space for you to exist we have to go without to go within I was okay with going without because I supplied all of my needs and I was better able to stand in my power because people were able to tell how well I was able to keep myself and that energy that I gave off made me more magnetic. I will never forget this. It had been one year that I was celibate and I was not dating or entertaining anyone because I think that's really important. But I went out for the night because I knew someone that was in town and they were DJing. And I will never forget that no matter where we went, what club we went to, people were called to me, whether they were called to say hello or compliment me on my fragrance or say that they liked my energy, my vibe, or they made some type of advance to take me out on a date, male or female. They were so interested in who I am. They thought that I was someone of importance. They would ask me for my social media. And for the people that I was going out with, they were witnessing and like, what the is going on? Like, your energy is just kind of crazy right now. And I'm like, this is the first time this has ever happened to me. This is also the first time that I've ever like kind of been out in a club setting where 
I was completely celibate. I wasn't looking for any type of partnership or any type of attention. I just was happy, you know? And it was like my pheromones were strong because I wasn't wasting them on the male gaze. And it was like I was so infectious because I knew who I was. And a lot of people wanted a piece. Maybe it wasn't even that they were actually interested in me, but it was the curiosity of my presence and the impact that I made when I entered a room. They want that for themselves. And that's something that anyone can harness, anybody can have if they do the work and be intentional about how they want to show up. And I'm so happy that I took the time to do that, not for the feedback, because it's always good to hear those things. And I think my ego kind of liked the fact that people were just like so curious about who I was, but it was the fact that I knew where it stemmed from. It wasn't because there was a man in my life that was treating me good. It wasn't that I was getting so much attention from all of these different men, it was genuinely because no man in my life was taking anything away from me. No man in my life was actually close enough to me to take the attention off of myself. I was actually able to see me for who I am and all of my confidence and all of my glory. And I was proud to wake up every day being me. That was the first time in my life that I've ever really felt that for real. And it's so worth it because I get to enter any room with that type of confidence because I know who I am. And if you're someone that's starting a business, if you're someone that's um, starting a new job or going to school for the first time and you want to make your mark, right? I think doing the work within yourself, being quiet with yourself enough to discover who you are, nurturing yourself so that you're not having to lean on someone else's validation and make you feel good or someone else complimenting you to make you feel like you are that bitch. I want you to take that time for yourself because you don't need anyone but you. Sure, people are great, but they're just a bonus. And I'm living proof that you literally can have the entire world at your disposal once you decide that you are worthy of it by the confidence that you have within yourself, by the way that you walk into a room. I knew that I could have any man, any woman that I so choose that day, all because I was really in my power. It's dangerous, almost. It's almost like no one should have that type of power. I know so many people do. That was my first taste of it. And I'm like, oh, God, thank God I I don't have the same feelings that I do because I would have totally taken advantage of everything. Drinks, food, all of, I love food, okay? Anyway. When I started to set boundaries, I realized that I was using my discernment poorly. Bottom line, stop pretending not to know the things that you know. And when you actually stand on everything that you know, it's going to be hard for you to allow certain people, aka men, only because this is the topic. It's going to be hard for you to allow certain men to exist into your orbit and not really have much to contribute. You're going to start to notice how much they take without really giving much in return. But if you are receiving fulfilling friendships and bonds with men, with the opposite sex, and you feel like it's worthy enough for them to keep, you actually have a kinship, a brotherhood, someone who has your back outside of wanting to have your body first, then this does not pertain to you. I actually respect friendships between a man and a woman where they can just exist as who they are and be a support and allies for one another instead of those friendships where he tried to do something with you and because he couldn't he's pretending to be your friend up until the time the man in your life messes up or until you actually let your guard down enough to let him into your body so we call things a spiritual awakening because sometimes After a certain point of growth and you reach a level of consciousness, it's hard for you 
to exist in your old self. It's as if overnight you wake up, witness your life in such a new way that you become disgusted with what you have allowed in your life. Not even disgusted, but it's so out of alignment with who you truly are to your core, your light heart self, that you have two choices. And this is the hard part. You can either take the steps in removing yourself and changing your life, or you sit in this discomfort for several years and settle because you're not brave enough to actually step away from everything that you've ever known. And both are extremely hard. But I feel like in the times where I was unhappy or depressed, it wasn't because I was lost. It was because I knew too much of what I knew so much that existing in certain areas just broke me. I was so upset with myself every day for not choosing better when I knew better that I just got so tired of my own shit that I got the fuck up. I just started standing up and it takes time. Like I can't judge anyone for not choosing to stand up and walk away from everything that they've known. It took me a while to get to that point and I still reach, I'm still at a level in my life where I need to stand up. Every season, every level, there's something that will get you to the next place and sometimes it's not going to be pretty. So it takes us time to actually take the next steps, but it doesn't mean that we should not do it should not not do it. You know what I mean? What I'm saying is when it came down to the men that I allowed in my life or just having male partnerships, male friendships, I realized that I couldn't pretend not to know everything that I knew. They really weren't contributing much of friendship or the things that I actually wanted in my life for me to keep them there I started to realize and know my worth and any man coming into my life needed to make a tie to make an investment whether they that be friendship um insight counsel um just honestly laughter I'm not really I'm asking for authenticity, friendship, and something that is going to have longevity in my life, not something where I could use them for a certain thing. And some women, some people are able to cultivate relationships where they can use certain people for certain things. More power to you. I just knew that I couldn't do that. So I needed to be more intentional about my friendships. So I guess this point was stop pretending like you don't know what you know when it comes to certain men because they know, right? And when we kind of create a crutch for them to um, pretend to be incompetent in certain things, it doesn't go well majority of the time they're not looking at you as like oh she's so great she's so cool she's so understanding in some cases that works but a majority of the situations that I've been in they would use that to their advantage oh I know she's more understanding than this woman so I could probably play around this way with her but for the other one I don't necessarily think she'll be able to go for that and As much as you don't think they're able to think that way, they are. They do. They think a lot more than they like to play on, but because when they play stupid, it serves them and they still get the outcome that they want. The the only game is, is picking and choosing which one they can fool at sometimes, you know? I just reached an age, like I'm 29 now, I just reached an age where I just... I don't want to do that anymore. And me saying no saved me in the long run. I didn't miss out on anything by saying no. Nothing. And I mean nothing is for the male gaze. 
this is kind of hard to say because I think from a young girl to an adult, there's just so much thing, so many things that happen in that time that we skip over just how much guys have drawn us to do the silliest things over them. It comes naturally. And then another person or another woman with more experience has to say, hey, don't do X, Y, Z. It doesn't give results. Like the term people raise their daughters and love their sons. And the raising of women never stops. Like we always find new ways around them because there's just no reasoning with them sometimes. And I was just at a point where I realized like, I don't want to do it anymore. Like, like we have had to do so many things under their permission almost from like having a vote or having a job or having an abortion. And I used to get so confused. Like why us? Like why are we the ones always getting this attention, this control, these rules, this, all of this. And then it makes sense. Like I think I had to realize everything that a woman is capable of and like we think more, we mature faster and strategically we have established a stronger buying power in this world. So we make things move. We've been proven to make things happen and I think men have always known the power that we have which is why if they can't harness our energy for themselves by keeping us at home or... Not to say that that's a bad thing, but keeping us at home to help start their business or to raise their children or to give them insight on what they should do. If they can't harness that power for themselves, they want to find some way to control it by any means. And because they are afraid of what the world would become if women were just at the forefront of making harder decisions outside of you know what you want to eat I think how well it would go scares them because then they realize maybe more of the physical things where they shine is probably all that they're meant to do and it's just baffling And it's really strange to me that we can be at the forefront of raising them, but somehow that doesn't make us legitimate leaders, like world leaders. I don't know. Real. What comes first? The chicken or the egg? Obviously not the egg. Genetically, your chromosomes were female first. I think that should be respected. I'm sorry about that rant. That was a little spicy. That's just how I'm feeling. Like, I'm I'm tired of having to, like, walk on eggshells about the things that I feel. I'm not a feminist because I don't, I really don't support all women like that. I don't think that roles should be equal. I just think the role should be properly managed. Like, we should go where we thrive. I wanted to keep more for myself to prepare for my future relationships. I realized that I was investing so much of my love and all of my energy and all of my goodness to these relationships with these men. And I always gave my all and thought that that was a good thing, that was something to be admired, and that's false. Like, stop. So many people will take that and use it to their advantage And I'm not saying you should keep yourself on guard, but once you develop the discernment to know who you should give a good amount of your love to, you'll be better able to control what's going on or what's coming in and out. You're supposed to only give parts of yourself that are easily replenished and that you're okay with not receiving back. I always wanted love that was reciprocated and reciprocation is good, but then it started it to bleed into something transactional and I don't think that that's necessarily what love is anymore. I had to find more control because I lacked boundaries. I spent so much of my time giving my all in relationships with barely anything back and when I asked for it in return, I was met with, Well, no one told you to do that anyway. That was something that you wanted to do. You surely is right. 
because I lacked boundaries and so many men saw that, there were ways that they could use it to their advantage to receive more without giving much in return. Because I allowed people high places in my life by doing literally nothing when it came down for them to deliver in places that I felt like were just common sense they were not equipped with tools to do that but if I was smarter I would have chosen better but because I'm a nice person and I love to see the good in people I was allowing them to take up space but they weren't contributing much And once I found that out, I would put myself in these stuck positions where nothing that I did would change them. They did not want to change. And to be honest, I don't want to have to change anyone to love me. I feel like not that the the perfect person is sent your way, but there is a person out there that for what you require, they are able to meet And it's not going to be too much for them because their life journey has equipped them with the tools better able to be a partner for you or just better able to be a friend to you. And that comes with life experience. I can't force maybe years of life experience on someone who's not supposed to be in my life anyway. And I think that's where so many women fall short is because we think that the love that we have and the energy that we want to give a man is enough to change them is enough to make them better and it's not they learn by their heartbreak they don't learn by a woman loving them they want they learn by a woman leaving them I want it to flow and grow in this type of love I didn't want to fall in love anymore and that meant that I had to really be smart about the decisions that I was making love is not enough especially not a love driven by ego and because I wanted to grow in love I am also putting myself in a position to learn more lessons for a stronger partnership and a stronger foundation I'm able to change parts of myself that are unhealthy and keep the parts that actually are. Because I was so understanding, I was losing parts of myself that were making me authentic. I was becoming more of what they were okay with, not who I wish, who I should be. I think a partner will lose me if I stop becoming the woman that I was when they met me. And I also lose myself in return. And after so many years of having to build myself back up after a heartbreak, I realized, uh, they never really needed that much of me. I was always okay. Putting the pieces back together myself is a task that I will always do. But it doesn't mean that I have to do it every time a person leaves my life. And the time that I spent alone, I realized This is the person that I want to keep, me. This is the version of myself that wants to say the same whether a person is here or not. And I don't have to get rid of this person once someone enters it. This is the person that should stay, not the person outside of me. And once I realize that, once I found who that person is, once I know, I knew that girl now, so... There's just so many things that happen when you spend that precious time with yourself that I think more people should invest in. I don't want someone so afraid of being alone that they fall into a relationship that is not meant for them. It's so sad to watch what people become or how much of a person they lose of themselves when they're not in safe relationships, not in safe friendships. It could change the world. Like, you know how when they have these back from the future movies and one small decision could change the whole world. That's what I feel about the decisions that we make in our lives where we are choosing certain things when we're choosing certain people when we're spending time with xyz outside of ourselves i just wanted to say 
to the friend that I always want to become if if I had someone in my life to say something to me over the years where people are coming and going you're never going to regret the sacred silence of solitude that you have in your life there's so much to discover within yourself I think about myself as the earth and the inner me as the ocean the earth parts as my external self and all of the people that I know and that I've come across there's over half of the ocean is not discovered and that's you that's that was who I am and it's so much more interesting diving deep into my being into my soul self into my ocean that whatever's on the surface It's great, but nothing pales in comparison to what's going on in the deep of who I am. That's where God is in me. So because I truly think that like God is my friend, I have so much fun just having these conversations in my heart and in my mind. And I'm able to grow in such a great way. And honestly, it's so crazy because I love like history stuff. Like I spend a lot of my time watching history like ancient egypt stuff like hence why i love this dog so much because she reminds me of like this egyptian dog anyway what i'm saying is that back in that time people valued different things there were a lot of different conversations happening and what they held sacred was here you know And that validated me so much when I was discovering about different queens in Egypt and like their monuments or just their, um, just the things that were important to the different queens of the past and how they spent their time as leaders, as mothers and all of these things, I started to realize like, oh my gosh, wow, like I identify with that type of journey, whether I'm, I'm writing something or I'm you know, reading on something, watching something that's very interesting to me, that's something that really resonates with me. And I realize at in this time of the world, there's not a lot of people that can relate to that. They're, they're not interested in that. They're more concerned with the rap something or Cardi B, whatever the fuck, than this type of, these type of topics. And I'm okay with that because a large majority of my life have spent with me being alone and I think it's because it's supposed to teach me something and I think it's for a a, a different type of path in my future and because I can't help but be this way I know it's for a higher purpose so I'm okay with it it is hard so if you're someone that isn't able to just sit alone with themselves have great friends or you know start a community of your own where people talk about the things that mostly interest you but definitely take the time to have different conversations with yourself that actually are decentering from what the male society and what that has kind of morphed us as women into being and um to see where that takes you i'm fascinated with who i am on a deep level that i like discovering what i like what i don't like um maybe that's the narcissist in me that's just so selfish that discovering the depths within myself is much more interesting than whatever could be going on outside of me And that's just where I'm at in my journey. And I'm not going to feel bad about it. I'm going to use it to be of service, which is why I'm here today. But yeah, wherever you are in your journey, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're single, whether you're happy in your relationship, whether you feel like it's time to exit, as a woman, it is so important to do that deep work in your solitude because we are the mothers that raise the children it's our mind it's our heart it's our journey that transfers into our womb that makes the children so if that is your path and if that is something that you want to do take that 
step and spend some time alone and see where it takes you hopefully somewhere deep and far and um, I hope it's a beautiful journey for you <clears throat> it is for me that's why I'm sharing it and that's why I am here and that is all I have I hope you enjoyed this video I hope to see you guys in my next one I had so much fun talking about this and um, yeah I'll see y'all soon bye